Hello. All right, all right. Looks like we are streaming and audio is working. Hello. Okay, so let me post this out to the various uh, social medias so that other people can see it. I'm gonna be explaining uh, this one year in the making satellite ground station build project. So let's see if I can find the link. I guess I can uh, go to my site. And thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna be doing many of these. So stay tuned. Seven people are watching already. That's awesome. So Thank you. Stay tuned. And I'm going to put this on Facebook. And I'm going to put it on uh, my personal page as well. Okay, so a year ago, I bought some equipment to build a satellite ground station. Let me show you that equipment. It's right behind this thumbnail video. Okay, so Matthew Stevens, NJ4Y, sold, he sent an email to the AMSAT BB mailing list. And thanks, Nicholas, for tuning in, saying that he had a Yezu G5500 antenna rotator, and he had the LBB tracker, and he was selling it for a pretty good deal, so I bought it from him. Here is Matthew setting it up at a field day event. Uh, he just didn't use it enough to justify the system, keeping the system. So here it is also at field day at sunset. These are his pictures. Here is the Yezu G5500 azimuth elevation antenna rotator. And he's got some cables he made for it, but I think they're only like 25 feet. I'll probably have to build some longer ones. And here is the control box for the antenna rotator. It sends the electricity to the motors and the rotators and you can control it manually. However, I want to build a fully automated satellite ground station. So I want to have that control by computer, which requires another thing it requires what the well, one of the things you can do is get an LBB tracker. And I have some, I actually live streamed about this a long time ago. So this is from January, um, January 22nd, 2018. So I bought that from him way back then. I live streamed about it uh, February 23rd here. So this is the, to me, I, I would say the heart of it. This is the Yezu G5500. So that is probably the first antenna I'll put on. He also sold me rotator. a small, um, arrow like antenna that could be used outdoors and that's what that was right there there's the lb tracker on top of the uh, g5500 so here we go so this is the lb tracker so that has a usb and a com port that connects to um the computer so it goes serial to this and then that can go to usb on the computer so I also bought, oh, I forgot to figure out when I bought this, but I bought an ICOM IC910H. I bought this radio. <clears throat> this is a pretty popular radio for satellite operators. It's um, full duplex, two meter, 70 centimeter with an optional uh, 23 centimeter slash 1.2 gigahertz L-band module. And I got, I got a used one with that L-band module, which is good for the, um, AO92 satellite. It has a switchable um, L-band uplink. Normally it's a 70 centimeter uplink and a 2 meter downlink, but they can switch it so that it, it receives the uplink on 1.2 gigahertz. So that is uh, something else I bought. I bought that used off QRZ. I'm kind of curious when I bought it. Um, I wish I had basically figured that out earlier. So I don't know if I'll be able to figure that out now without basically showing all my personal emails, which I don't want to do. So anyway, um, I bought that in January. What did I do next? So I did an apartment um, site survey video just to kind of show the situation here. So I live on the second floor of this apartment, second story, and I'm considering putting a, a satellite antenna system on the backside where the room is that I have my ham radio gear. 
So I live. I have an HF here. radio and um, my computer. My plan and is to put the antenna right around here. Sort of stuff. I'm kind of in a hole, and I'm kind of a um, full view of the hurry. And it's and I think that if I had an antenna on the backside, um, so. and I think that if I had an antenna on the way, these trees. This especially is me basically the talking north, about the obstructions here. I have around me. Hung. And initially, I was like, the, well, I have to move to a house or whatever. and where I have a good view of the horizon. But I was like, you know, a lot of people set up satellite ground stations with not ideal horizons. So why can't I do it too? So I am in an apartment. I actually rent. So that's the next probably important point to talk about here. So I made this post in April 2018 on Facebook. Um, and basically what happened was when I first moved into the apartment five years ago, this month approximately, I told my landlord that I was a ham radio operator and that, you know, maybe I could put an, I asked, I was like, could I put an antenna up in the trees? Of course he was fine with that. I have a, I've had an HF antenna hung between some trees for a while. It's currently down. Um, but I asked him if I could put an antenna on the actual apartment and he said, I think that would be kind of cool. It turns out he's into science. Um, he's just kind of open to that sort of stuff. And he's, he said that five years ago, so I remembered that, and I called him up, and I was like, you remember what you said five years ago? What about, could I actually do that? And he said basically yes. Um, he would want to make, he wanted to make sure it was done well, you know, there weren't going to be any um, water leakage issues or anything to the apartment, and, but he also wanted me to sign a lease. Well, I, I would have to, to, to have permission officially to do this, ideally. But basically what happened was he hasn't raised the rent um, for a really long time. And so, so incidentally, um, this is April. Uh, so that's when he first said I could do it. And then like we went back and forth on email and then he didn't respond to me for a while. And then I finally got back with him. And then um, basically over in January and December, we talked, actually it was November that I started getting back with him after having this radio silence for, since April. And I was like, um, let's do this. And the thing was, he wanted to raise my rent because I haven't had a only a, I've only had a $10 raise in the five years that I've been here and rent prices have gone up and all this other stuff. So I was like, you know, of course I don't want to do that, but he made a, basically a proposal to how much it was going to go up. Basically it was going to graduate. I'd have to sign an 18 month lease. It would go up two times and I, I made a counter offer and he was okay with that. So, so he basically wrote up a new lease and he sent it to me and I signed it. And this was, um, he sent the lease to me on January 7th. Here is the, uh, addendum or the permission to erect the ham radio antenna landlord blah hereby gives permission to tenant John Breyer at Raleigh to install a roof ham radio antenna, similar to illustrations here. Uh, this picture is of a tripod that I helped my friend Sammy install, and that's him right there, um, KK4TJH. So I actually have experience installing the tripod like the one I'll install on my roof. This is a picture of another station I got off QRC off their profile. I can't remember whose station this is, but they're going to use the same type of antennas I have, uh, or that I'm going to buy, the same rotator. So that's what I showed to him. and. So today I'm going to buy a ladder. Um, I guess a couple other things to mention. I'm going to get a, uh, hey Carl, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to get a M2 Leo pack. So let's see, I think I have some of those, those um, links here. M2. And uh, where is the M2? Oh, come on. This is the antenna system I'm going to get. So this is the same one that you can see in um, the pictures that I had in that that uh, addendum that my landlord made. So let's see here. Yeah. So here's some pictures. Um, this is the one that I had in my that my landlord put in the. This is this is the. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little nervous here. So this is the picture that my landlord put in the addendum he made for the lease as an example of what I was going to build. So he's okay with this. Um, these antennas are the same ones I'm going to get. So this is from M2. 
It's called the Leo pack. They're cross polarized. So that basically, um, instead of being just vertically polarized, that basically means I'll have some, I'll have less fades in the signal because of the cross polarization. I'll still have fades, but it'll be less. And here is another one. This is N3GS's uh, backup satellite station. He actually has a much bigger one. And I guess that's kind of cool. Never seen anybody that had a backup satellite station. I guess um, he has a backup in case there's some rare grid square he wants to get and the primary one fails, he can switch over to the backup. So uh, this is me uh, where I helped install my, my friend Sammy's um, tripod. He put a two meter, 70 centimeter J pole from Aero antenna on this and a scanner antenna. And we also had a um, off center fed dipole attached to this and strung all the way over to Turi. So here's more pictures of the tripod we installed. This is, I don't think it's completely installed yet there. Um, there's Sammy. So this is the inside of his, um, his uh, attic. And we put these, or he put these plywood, half inch plywood um, boards here so that instead of just screwing into the roof, it basically was secured with, uh, I think these are called lag bolts, I'm not sure, but um, so that basically it, you can use these antenna, these tripods um, and just screw into the roof, you know, with like wood screws and leave it at that. But we can't do that. This isn't a small um, antenna. This is a much bigger antenna and this is the best way to do it. So I'll do something like this. Um, and he's had this up for a couple years, at least, I think since 2015, you know, and it's, that's, that's two or three years. I think he's had it up there and he's had no leak issues whatsoever. I looked into doing a non penetrating antenna mount, but the mounts are extremely expensive. They're like $600. So, and a lot of people use these tripods. It, it's a known working setup. So that's what I'll probably do. And what else? So yeah, this is the video of my um, apartment that I showed you earlier. I'm looking through some other videos. Here's a um, K3RRR has the same exact setup. Um, it's the M2 Leo pack antenna, Yezu G5500 azimuth elevation uh, rotator. Now he doesn't have the same tripod system. I've actually, we used this for an Ares contact I did in February um, on top of a flat uh, roof uh, gymnasium. Incidentally, that's kind of why I wanted to do this. After I did an Ares contact um, where I basically had to learn all this stuff from Mark Hammond, NAMH, uh, he mentored me and another fellow to do the Ares contact. Um, he had uh, a setup, basically, he, he bought it for the Ares contact partly, but also he justified buying it for the Ares contact. Um, let me back up a little bit. He has two satellite tracking stations at his home but for the Ares contact, he didn't want to tear down his setup just for you know one day. So he bought a whole nother setup basically. Um, and he justified it by basically saying he was gonna try to start a ham radio club at the university where he's the provost, um, Campbell University. So he taught me how to do all this stuff. And after seeing it in action and using it, I was like, I want this. <laughs> so when I saw Matthew in J4Y, um, when I saw him, selling this gear, I was like, I'm on it. I don't know where I'm gonna put this, but I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna do it. And I was like, like I said earlier, I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm kind of an idealist and a perfectionist. I was like, well, I have to buy a house where there's a perfect view of the horizon because I'm certainly not gonna stick it up here where to the west there's trees blocking the antenna because I wanna talk to the west, I'm on the east coast, I wanna get all the grids out in the west. But like I said, I was like, uh, other people put up compromise satellite stations and they're fine. Like, look at this one here. It's on the ground and there's trees right here. So clearly he's not going to get a signal for a while, but you can still have a lot of fun. Um, overhead passes, um, you know, like I have a decent view to the east and I haven't done any transatlantic um, contacts before. So that could be a whole other aspect of the hobby that I just could really enjoy. Who knows? So... Um, and here's a picture of me. Um, I guess I already showed a picture of me, but there's his scanner antenna. This is more complete after we got it all set up properly. So you can see a coaxial cable and everything. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to, uh, to say. So I'm going to try to keep these videos short. Today I want to buy a ladder. That's my main goal. I'll probably do some other things, hopefully. But I haven't been on my roof yet, and I'm on the second story. I need to figure out how tall a ladder I need. I want to go up there and just kind of get a feel for the roof. 
and then I'll start buying more things. I need to buy the antennas. Um, I need to buy probably, I need to make new coaxial cables from a spool, 100 foot spool I already have probably. I'll cut that in half. I need to make rotor cables. Um, I need another preamp. So I have a, um, that's the other thing I can show you. I have uh, uh, our antenna. Let's see if we can find um, advanced and Antenna research. Uh, I have a preamp basically. So another thing you need for a satellite station is you don't have to have it, but you need a preamplifier because over long runs of coax, the signal degrades and satellites have weak signals. So it's ideal to have an amplifier at the antenna basically that boosts the signal and allows the signal to be a little bit stronger when it gets to the radio through all that coax, that lossy coax. So I have one for VHF, which I bought for the um, Aris contact, uh, but I don't have one for UHF yet, so I need to buy that. Um, so that's about it. I'll stop right there. Thanks for watching. 73, I'm John Breyer, KG4 AKB. I guess I just have to go to my OBS and stop. You don't stop on the... Uh, you don't stop on the YouTube page. All right. Thanks, y'all.